Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video we're going to be doing a medieval book review and it is The Greatest Night by Thomas Esbridge and the subtitle is The Remarkable Life of William Marshall, The Power Behind Five English Thrones. Um, Thomas Esbridge is pretty famous for his book on the Crusades, I believe. Um, I haven't read any of his other works. Um, this was my first book by him. The main purpose of this book is to give a full-bodied biography of William Marshall and in this sense the book does a great job and fulfills its purpose remarkably. Um, he uses a an actual medieval manuscript of the uh, of a biography of William Marshall um, throughout the book and that, it's interesting he has a whole introductory chapter on that manuscript and how it was first um, truly uh, discovered out of a private collection only in the 1800s. He uses that manuscript as sort of the backbone um, of this book and fills in all the gaps and details with um, other sources um, where it's necessary and also to uh, critique and contradict that um, original medieval biography of William Marshall um, when it's needed. Now I learned a lot from this book. Um, I knew a little bit about William Marshall going into it um, as well as the Angevin dynasty which was the reigning um, power in England uh, during William Marshall's lifetime. But um, I felt that one of the really strong points of this book was to flesh out the whole context of basically um, the High Middle Ages um, that was starting to form around this uh, time period. And for example, um, when William Marshall was a young knight um, in uh, Henry the Young King's um, retinue, uh, basically tourney, basically a bunch of guys going around doing rounds of turn uh, tournaments essentially, um, he does a great job explaining the whole purpose of tournaments and how they went on and how uh, basically what went on and how they differed from before and afterwards uh, and basically the whole evolution of tournaments uh, throughout the Middle Ages. I thought that was really good. Um, I, um, there were several details that I didn't know about uh, going into it and he does a rem one of the strong points of this book is basically showing how there's a big difference between the early Middle Ages and the real formation of the high Middle Ages um, and the late Middle Ages. For example, when people think of you know knights in shining armor with the full plate mill and everything, even in Willie Marshall's time in the mid 12th century, that still wasn't even um, that big of a thing yet. Um, it was still very rare and chainmail was still the armor of the day at this point in time. This book does fill out lots of uh, contextual areas of life and society uh, such as that. Um, throughout the whole book and I felt that was really good and it didn't detract from the story of William Marshall um, and I think it definitely enhanced it a lot to be honest. Um, there are points in the book where there is a lot of speculation and guesswork but uh, with any medieval or ancient or classical biography that's bound to happen even if we have um, lots of information um, on certain characters such as uh, William Marshall in the high middle ages it's still not really possible to know everything or even most things about what was going on in his life or why he made certain decisions stuff like that but i think overall most of his arguments are sound and uh reasonable and there's lots of things about william marshall i learned uh i didn't know anything about his um irish holdings um especially through um the marriage to his wife uh who had irish holdings i guess you could say um didn't know anything about that sort of stuff and how he had like a power base in um eastern ireland uh during his later life didn't know anything about that so yeah i'm very pleased i read this um learned quite a bit about william marshall that i didn't know before for so for that reason i'm really pleased with the book um like i said the only real downside to the book is some areas of his life there's a little bit too much speculation and I will say there are some drier parts, but for the most part, William Marshall's um, whole career was pretty active. So there's not too, too many um, lulls in activity uh, going on uh, during his lifetime, which means that the book is going forward uh, quite a bit. But it's interesting to see, though, even though he had power that he accrued over his lifetime um, as he served under five-ish English kings. I don't know if Henry the Young King really counts as a king. Like officially but anyways it's interesting to see how he used it differently um for the five different kings there's henry the young king uh henry the second richard lionheart john and henry the third i believe it's henry the third i think it was henry the third but anyways 
Um, like I said, it's interesting how he wielded his power differently. Um, as he both was loyal to most of his, or actually, I mean, he was loyal, but he also feared um, some of his kings as well. But it's interesting to see how he could stay neutral sometimes and couldn't other times. Um, and just to see his fortunes rise and fall based on just uh, the reigning, who was reigning on the throne in England. It was kind of interesting. Um, one of the only downsides of this book, too, is the... This is like a trend I'm starting to see with nonfiction books, and I don't understand it. There are good notes um, in the back of the book. However, there are no in text. Well, I don't say there's n none, but the notes in the back of the book are not text or not cited in the main text at all. There's no subscript or superscript to tell you that there's going to be a note there. Um, so I don't know how. I don't know why that's a thing. If you guys know, leave that in the comments. I don't understand that because if you want to read the notes, like on some books, like I would on this one, I don't know that there's a note in the back, and I don't like flipping back and forth aimlessly. I already don't like doing that when there are notes, but I really am not going to do it if I don't even know if there's a note there or not. So I don't know why books do that. I've seen that several times already this year, and it's just really irritating. I don't know why, but it is what it is, I guess, but I don't like it. However, on the other side, they do have, this book does have a couple plates, which are high quality plates. Um, really interesting. It gives you some flavor for some of the characters that are in the book. Well, I'm going to give The Greatest Night by Thomas Asbridge a four and a half out of five stars for being a clearly written, um, well-documented biography of a medieval, important medieval figure. And always remember, read victoriously. Oh, that 